Is the T-Mobile Revel 5G worth buying in 2021? Well, in this video, we're going to find out. Hey everybody, this is Andre here covering for Kevin on the Kevin Breeze channel. And today, we're going to be taking a look at the T-Mobile Revel 5G. This phone is available through T-Mobile and Metro by T-Mobile. For more information on prices and availability, be sure to check the link in the description below. Let's get started. So this phone comes with a 6.53 inch IPS LCD display with a resolution of 1080p and a PPI of 395. The aspect ratio for this phone is 19.5 by 9. We have a hole punch for the front facing camera right here and this camera is 16 megapixels. I have to say this camera does look really nice. A lot of the phones in the same price range as this one have a water drop for the front facing camera and I personally think the hole punch looks a lot better. It makes the bezel look a lot thinner and gives it a much more modern professional appearance as opposed to the water drop that looks a lot more dated. And overall with 16 megapixels this front facing camera is definitely one of the higher quality ones. Even some of the flagship phones that are only a year or so old only have 8 megapixels for their front facing camera so this is definitely a plus. This phone has 128 gigabytes with micro SD card expansion now this is a great amount of memory. It's pretty normal for a phone in this price range to start out at 64 gigabytes, so this is definitely a great plus. Not to mention, even iPhones start out a lot more expensive than this phone, and this has double the memory. To give you an idea of what this looks like, right now I have everything that I use on a daily basis, and maybe a little more than that, downloaded onto this phone, and it's only taking up 14% of the storage. As you can see, there's a lot of free space on this phone, so if you take a lot of photos and videos and run apps that take up a lot of space, then this phone is going to be great for you because it has a lot of internal storage, so you won't need to use the microSD expansion until you really get up there. Even then, I still do think it's a good idea to utilize other sources of storing data, such as a microSD card or using some sort of online storage to store things like photos and videos just to make sure you keep as much memory off the phone itself as possible. Either way, this phone has a great amount of storage, and if you tend to store a lot of media, this is going to be a great plus. Now, there's no wireless charging, unfortunately, but this phone does have a fingerprint scanner on the back. Let's give that a try now. There we go. Let's try it one more time. As you can see, it's very fast and responsive, and it's placed in a nice convenient spot, so I have no complaints. Taking a look at the camera setup of the phone, we do have a triple camera setup. There's a 48 megapixel rear camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera, and a 5 megapixel macro camera. Now these are some really nice high quality cameras with 48 megapixels and an ultra wide camera as well as a macro camera you're definitely going to be getting some good quality photos with a lot of different options too. The macro camera is a really nice feature to have. Even a lot of the flagship phones don't really have macro cameras. You don't see it too often, so that's definitely a nice, interesting feature. And of course, the ultra wide is really becoming a standard today, and it's definitely a good thing to see. So we are currently in the normal camera mode right now, and then if you go to more, you can select the macro. And then you can get those close-up images. Again, this is a really nice feature to have. I haven't seen a whole lot of phones with a macro camera, so it's definitely a benefit if you're taking a lot of pictures and need the option to get those close-up details. We can also access the ultra-wide camera with this button right here. The ultra-wide feature is really nice. It's one that I personally use often, so seeing a high-quality ultra-wide camera on a phone is definitely a plus. And then, of course, there's portrait mode as well. Who doesn't like a good portrait mode? We're currently in the regular mode of the front-facing camera. As you can see, it is definitely a really high-quality front-facing camera. A lot of the front-facing cameras on these mid-range phones aren't too good, but this one is very high-quality, and it can also use portrait mode. We're now in portrait mode, and I would say that the portrait mode for the front-facing camera is pretty decent. Just doing a quick test of the video mode of the phone. We're shooting in 4K right now, and also keep in mind the audio quality. As you can see, that was the video mode. We are able to shoot in 4K up to 30 frames per second on this phone's rear camera. Now on the front camera, the quality is limited to 1080p. Also keep in mind that although you can shoot in 4K, 
The resolution of the device itself is 1080p, so you're going to be limited to viewing videos in that resolution. Now internally, we're getting 6GB of RAM with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 765 processor. I ran a Geekbench 5 benchmark test on this phone and it has a single core score of 624 and a multi-core score of 1944. So this phone definitely has a powerful processor and you're really going to get your use out of it if you're using it for more heavy activity like lots of content consumption, content creation like photo and video editing, and maybe some gaming. But if you're just using the phone for basic activities like talking, texting, browsing the web, doing a little bit of social media here and there, then you might not get your full use out of it. But at the same time, the processing power is very powerful. So you'll at least be able to do even those basic activities pretty well. But if that's all you're doing with your phone, then you might not need a phone this powerful and you might be better off getting something a little bit lower end that's more suited just for basic activities. But again, if you need something with a more powerful processor for more intensive activities, then this is definitely going to be a plus for you. Now, this phone also runs on Android 10, which definitely is a plus as well. Another option a lot of people choose when they're looking for a phone in this price range that has a little bit more processing power for more intense activities is one of the older flagship phones. And the advantage that this phone has over those flagship phones is that this phone runs on Android 10 and it's a relatively new phone, whereas the flagship phones are usually a couple years older at least. So they're not going to have Android 10. They usually have Android 9 Pi or even sometimes Android 8 Oreo. And if you're looking for a device that's on the newer side and has the processing power, but don't want to go up to the brand new flagship price range, then this phone would definitely be a good option for you. Certainly better than the older flagship phones because it's going to have that newer Android and it's going to have a very similar amount of processing power as well. Now this phone has a 4500 milliamp hour battery which is definitely on the larger side. This is another edge it has over the older flagship phones. If you're looking for a phone in that type of range, the older flagship phones in my experience usually have a battery that's around 3000 to 3500 milliamp hours. And while that's not bad, this is going to be a lot better because not only is this phone a lot newer, but the battery is also bigger. So you're definitely going to get a lot more battery life and power. Remember, when you're doing intense activities, processing power is only part of the equation. When you have a phone that's very high performance and you're doing intense activities on it, you're obviously going to need a good battery to work that processor. And this phone with a 4500 milliamp hour battery is definitely going to have that. Whereas some of the older flagship phones, although their batteries were good when they were made, a lot of them, since they're going to be older, are not going to have quite the battery life that they did when they were brand new. This phone also has NFC, so you can use Google Pay if you want to. Now that we've gone over some of the specs of the phone, let's take a look at the hardware. So up top here, we got a 3.5mm headphone jack, and right here there's a noise-canceling microphone. And of course our earpiece and again our hole punch front facing camera. I'm definitely a big fan of this look. It looks a lot better, more modern and more professional than the water drops. So definitely a strength to me. So at the bottom we have our microphone, our USB-C charging port, and our speaker. I know both the speaker and the microphone look the same. But if you look closely you can see that this one is actually the speaker and this one is actually the microphone. I honestly really like this design. It really gives it a more uniform, clean look. Whereas the microphone being this little dot and then the speaker being another big hole on the side. I like this because it makes it look more symmetrical and it's a really nice addition to the design. It makes it look a lot more clean and modern. Combined with the front facing camera, I really think they did a good job on this design. So on the left side of the phone, we have our slot for our SIM card and micro SD card. And then on the right side, there's a volume up button, the volume down button, and our power button. And you'll notice that this power button is also pink for the T-Mobile colors. Really nice look. And on the back, there's the camera setup, our flash, and our fingerprint scanner. A T-Mobile logo right in the middle here. Overall, as I've said before, this phone has a very clean, professional look. It looks very modern and sleek. It does give me the feel and the vibe of a flagship phone that's a lot more expensive than it actually is. So that's definitely nice. And I really like how they implemented the T-Mobile colors into the design of the phone too. We have it on the power button here and on the back right here. The material is really unique and as you can see, the fingerprints do show up but they don't show up that much to the point where it's distracting. In general, I am definitely a fan of the design of this phone. 
A lot of the flagship phones that were made a couple years ago may have felt new at the time, but now you look at them and they just look ancient. I don't think that's gonna happen with this phone. I feel like the design of this phone is more timeless and it's not gonna feel old even when it is. And now let's take a look at what comes inside the box. So first we got a quick start guide in here. And then of course a SIM card removal tool. There's a USB-C charging cable, which this is a really nice quality one. I really like the material they used on the cord. And then of course we have our wall adapter. In conclusion, is this phone worth buying in 2021? Personally, I think this phone is absolutely worth buying in 2021. This phone has some great features that even other phones in this price range might not have. And it honestly even beats some of the older flagship phones. So if you're looking for a phone that has a lot of processing power, but still want the newest features, the latest version of Android, and don't want to go into the price range of the brand new flagship phones, then this phone would be a great option for you. Even if you just do basic activities and want a phone that's a little nicer and does things a little better, then this phone is still going to be a great value. And I definitely don't think you would regret buying it. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one.